If it's the change I think it is, then what you should have in your portfolio going forward can be very different from what it has been. We think that living will be a little less easy in the months and years to come. You can't live on a shot of adrenaline every morning for 13 years. Howard Marks is not just an investor. He's the founder of Oak Tree Capital Management, one of the largest hedge funds in the world. We manage seven billion at TCW and the unspoken question was whether we could ever get back to $7 billion after we left there. And of course, now we're at about 180 Every once in a while, he writes memos and Warren Buffett said about them. When I see these memos from Howard Marks in my mail, they are the first thing I open and read. I always learn something. Although I find that if I don't write for three months, people write me and say, are you still alive? According to Howard Marks, we are at the precipice of a turning point, a once in a lifetime financial event. I think it was the most important single event in the financial world in the last 50 years. He calls this event a sea change, which is defined as a complete transformation, a radical change of direction in attitude goals. A sea change doesn't impact only the economy, but also businesses, the stock market, and ultimately how we as investors, we should approach investing. When I go on TV, which I do a half a dozen times a year, they always want me to say buy or sell in or out, risk on, risk off. Imagine you've been sailing for years, a vast ocean of investments. It has been calm. The wind has been steadily behind you, pushing you forward. But suddenly the wind changes. Now it's in front of you. This is what we call a headwind. And it's not just a wind, there is a storm also coming. But if you look more closely, it's more than just a storm, it is a sea change. A fundamental shift that redefines the journey and strategies that we need to survive and thrive. This is exactly what is happening in the markets today according to Howard Marks. There has been three sea changes in his career. The first one was in the early 1970s when he started as an investor. At the time, the Fed was fighting inflation and they had to raise interest rates rapidly. It was easy to make money in bonds, but not in stocks. The second sea change was in the last 40 years where interest rates just declined at the point that it reached 0% in 2008 and it stayed at 0% or around 0% for over a decade. The last 14 years were really quite idyllic in the economy and in the market. We had the longest bull market in history, the longest economic recovery in history. We set a lot of records in many ways. Living was easy. Interest rates were low, companies can get all the money they wanted, there were very few defaults or bankruptcies, easy times. In other words, it was a period of easy money. This period of 09 through 21, easy period, easy to get money. The main reason why the Fed kept interest rates at around 0% was to stimulate the economy. Since low interest rates mean that businesses and individuals can borrow money easily. And when they borrow that money, they are going to spend it. They are going to grow their business. When they grow their business, they hire more people. They are going to invest in research and development, create new technologies. That's why in recent decades, we have seen the emergence of many new small companies that have become giants. For individuals, low interest rates means that mortgage rates are also low and it becomes easier for them to buy houses, to build houses and consequently create more jobs. But it has unintended consequences. For example, making bonds bad investments. Investors then have to look for higher risk investments such as stocks. Those who are already investing in stocks, they are going to move to alternative investments such as cryptocurrencies or even invest in companies that are not profitable. Nobody really cares when it is so easy to borrow money. If the company you're investing in is not profitable, they can sell you something that in 10 years they are going to be profitable. They are going to change the world. But today, it doesn't really matter. They can keep operations as usual as long as they can borrow money to sustain current business. And as asset prices go up, investors who were on the sidelines, now they have the fear of missing out. They want to get into the action and they also start investing. I've been hearing for the last nine years that I have been investing that the market is in a bubble, that we should be waiting to invest. But those who waited, they have lost. It was better to invest. And we can even argue that 
it was vetted in best in those high growth companies even at 200 times earnings until of course the fed had higher inflation and they had to raise interest rates in order to fight high inflation. The Federal Reserve System wants real interest rates to be positive because this is how they are going to be effective. If inflation's two, then the Fed funds rate should be higher than that so that there's a positive real Fed funds rate. That's where the third and current sea change takes place. A new environment where interest rates are on the rise again. The big question is, is it gonna be easy times like the last 14 years? or more back to normal. I'm not calling for a cataclysm, but I'm just calling for a more normal world where interest rates are higher. It costs more money to borrow. You can't, it's not so easy to borrow. Bad companies can't borrow. Bad companies can default. Bad companies can go bankrupt. It's a little more of a struggle. This is not unusual. This is the norm. The last 14 years have been the unusual. Time. Higher interest rates is not the end of the world, but it certainly affects the economy, the stock market, and eventually the way we need to invest. Like me, I believe that most of you have your investments in stocks. So how does this sea change affect our stock investment? How does this sea change affect your stock investments? You can get high single digits on high yield bonds and leveraged loans, public instruments that are tradable and liquid, or low double digits on private loans for buyouts. The best buyouts, the biggest buyouts, double digit returns. Isn't that enough? And loans on credit instruments, returns on credit instruments are much safer than equity. Equity just gets the residual. After everybody gets paid, they get what's left. Credit gets paid early in the process and if people don't pay you, you get the company because they go bankrupt. So it's quite safe. If investors can have the same returns on bonds that they are currently having on stocks, why should they bother take the extra risk of investing in stocks? The shift we saw earlier now goes in the opposite direction. If you were happy with 10% annual returns on some established companies, now bonds are giving you the same 10% returns. You would rather invest in bonds because it is safer, it is less volatile. Those who were happy with 15% returns on high growth companies, now they are getting 15% on, let's say, the established companies. They would rather make the shift into those established companies. Those investing in alternative investments, they now move into stocks. Every time I'm attending a meeting or a summit by Itoro, my fellow popular investors, they are always asking for more bond securities on the platform. So you see the demand for bonds for fixed income or credit instrument like Howard Marks likes to call them is increasing among investors. This is not a sponsored video but feel free to copy or follow my investments on eToro where I am an elite popular investor. Those who are investing in risky companies expecting 15% returns a year, now when they see their stock prices fall, they are going to make the shift they are going to invest in companies that are more established. It's not just about the stocks, but also about the fundamentals. When interest rates are on the rise, it becomes harder for companies to borrow money and of course, to refinance their debt. And only companies that are profitable are going to survive over the long term. Nobody ever repays their debts. They just refinance it. And when they go to the bank to refinance it, the bank says, you're not as good a credit as you used to be, or we don't have as much money to lend as we used to have, or our standards are higher. The solution according to Howard Marks is to invest in bonds. But we need to understand something first. It's time to smash the like button. Howard Marks work for his clients and they have a certain expected returns for the amount of risk that they are taking in the market. He doesn't work for you, he doesn't work for me, he works for his clients. We need to understand this. Every investor, everybody in the audience should have a sense for what their normal risk posture should be. It depends on their age, their assets, their income, the relationship between their income and their needs, the number of dependents they have, what their aspirations are, how much they can tolerate risk, what is their intestinal fortitude. Uh, there are a lot of things that go into it. From zero, which is no risk, to 100, which is complete risk, I think that everybody should have a sense for what's right for them. And that would help them define 
their normal stance in terms of aggressiveness and defensiveness. What is the right balance for you? You can still profit from stocks even when interest rates are rising or markets are trending downwards. Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger demonstrated this in the 1980s. It is still possible to make money from stocks. This time actually we have an advantage that they did not have in the 1980s. Corporate balance sheets are generally okay. The leverage is in the government. So the companies themselves are generally less levered. Therefore, you can find great companies with wonderful balance sheets. Even high growth companies like Meta have good balance sheet. This is a company with hardly any debt. Google has hardly any debt. I'm comfortable investing in Meta even if they are using that money. To put into something new, the Metaverse, I'm comfortable taking that risk because I know that this company is nowhere near bankruptcy. That doesn't mean that we should buy at any price. We go out into the marketplace, we just say what's cheap today. If you're a shopper and you have a Saturday off, you just say, well, where are the sales? You want bargains. You shouldn't look on the pile of things that everybody knows about, loves and is happy with. Those things are likely to have been bid up. There is going to be a shift towards traditional value stocks. I don't like to call them like that, but these are companies that have better fundamentals and today they are relatively cheaper compared to the high growth stocks. Imagine Meta in 2022. It was a value stock. We have the additional benefit today that many of these companies are investing in growth. Howard Mark's strategy is to invest in bonds. Although he has many good points about the market, that doesn't mean that we should just listen to him and follow him. He works for his clients, not for you, not for me. I love investing in stocks. This is what is more appropriate for me. And you too, you need to consider what is more appropriate for you. If you are the CEO of a big bank, there are other risks and limitations that you need to consider, which I talk about in this video. Have a nice day and goodbye.